Hello, everybody. It's Stacy again from The Advisor. And today I'm very excited because we have a very special guest today. We have Eric Ebron. He is a leadership consultant. And today he wants to talk about the legacy of leadership, how to be a great leader. We all will have it inside of us. We all have the capabilities of being a great leader. But what is a great leader and how do we become a great leader? Well, Eric's here today and he's going to show you how. And I'm very excited to have him on the show. Eric, it is an honor to have you on the show today. You know, tell everybody a little about yourself and what you do. Thank you, Stacey. Uh, again, I'm honored to, to be here with you. I know we've had a, a trek to, to be at this point. I'm super excited to be here talk. You know, when I look at, at leadership myself, um, it's, it's one of those powerful positions that those that are there have a responsibility that no other would have. So I, I, my personal kind of statement on leadership is I, I want to cultivate a legacy of leadership uh, by inspiring and empowering individuals to reach their full potential. I want to help grow them and help develop them. And this is for generations to come. So so I know it seems like it's a, it's a tall task, but I have the rest of my life to do it. And, and I think sharing with people, uh, young and old, how to get there and then how to maintain strong leadership is very important. It is important, you know, and, and as we were talking before, anybody has the capability of being a, a good leader. We all have it within us. We all have those qualities, you know, and in your eyes, what do you feel makes a great leader? You know, when I look at um, uh, having or being a, a great leader, for me, and this is what I teach as well, uh, wanting to be uh, the example, I call it modeling what matters. So when there's an opportunity to set an ethical standard, you as leader have to model that, right? When there are business parameters and KPIs you need to meet, if there's an urgency you need to fit, the leader needs to do that as well. So, you know, we have these categories. We have the servant leadership, right? And we have the autocratic, we have the democratic, we have the collaborative. What I, what I look at is for each of those styles, there's a group of people that really gravitate to that. So if you're an autocratic leader, and you work into an environment that say maybe fast food, um, the, the number of bodies may be too small to, to kind of be and you have to do it. You know, you really need this collaborative effort to do that. Yeah. So I think what it takes to be a really good leader is having that empathetic ear, modeling what matters, saying to yourself, you know, I, I need to be what I'm trying to look for, eliminating the cliches. I've, I've ran across many leaders who just, spit out the, the verbiage you hear all over. That's just, most of it doesn't mean, mean anything. It just doesn't make sense. And yeah. you're like, just speak real to me so I can I can do. So being able to do that, navigating, I call the, the minefield. When a, when a leader is able to understand what's going on in their head and say to themselves, this needs to be interpreted, broken down, and then set into a set of instructions for someone to, to follow, ask questions, and then adhere to, a leader needs to be able to do that. So I know it sounds a bit convoluted, but really leaders need to say, what do I want to see if I need a great leader? And then model that. I think that that's great. And you had mentioned early on, you mentioned this story about when you first started and you, you really, you know, and how you met somebody, you happened to just sit across a, a, a leader of a corporation of the company that you were working for. And, you know, they gave you such great advice. Can you tell a little about that story? Because I think it's so inspiring. You know, the, 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 the gentleman, he's still a, a powerful example for me today. So I started uh, and uh, I'm in the aerospace uh, uh, industry and I started at a company and about six months in or so, I still don't know anyone and what's going on. And they had this new leadership change, senior levels. And so they were doing the tour, the senior VPs kind of show up and they're having this luncheon. And so, you know, I get my, my meal, my hot dog and chips or whatnot. And as I look around, I, you know, again, I don't know anyone, but there was empty space in front of the leader, right? So I, I go and sit down in front of him and he's a British guy, great guy. And he looks at me and he says, so, so, you know, who are you? I kind of introduced myself and he says, so, you know, what do you want to do? And, and I says to him, I like what I saw you do today. And he kind of smiles and so you want to be a senior vice president? I said, I think, I think, I think that sounds good. Yeah. And he started saying to me, that's doable. 
I mean, mind blown, Stacey, six months into a company, aerospace, multi-billion dollar company, and here's a senior vice president going, yeah, why not? And so he starts telling me his background. He was second shift 15, 17 years ago over in England, made his way, persevered, had discipline, had great mentors and leaders around him, and here he is. And he's saying, that's possible. A another leader showed up uh, right next to him and says, you know, are, are you telling tall tales, you know, and, and seeing this interaction that, you know, even at that high level, that they're approachable, they're, they're meaningful, and that they could set an example for me was 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 powerful. And and although others around may have looked at me like who's the new guy sitting with the senior vice president, I was able to capture and get, uh, you know, this, this audience that, that no one else around there got. And so, it helped develop and propel me. And, and sure enough, you know, 10 years later, I was a director in, in the same aerospace company. So I think it was, it was excellent. I think that's wonderful. And, and what I like about that is that you came across somebody that was just very down to earth. He just, he talked to you as you, he didn't care what level you were on. He didn't care that you were only working there for six months. He talked to you just like you were on his level, like you were one of the corporate people, like, you know, and you were one of the executives in, in the corporation. He didn't talk to you like you were just starting out and he didn't make you feel like you were below him. He made you feel like you were just a, a part of him, a friend of him, you know, like he, he just, it was, it was a great experience because he was able to interact and then he was able to give you such great advice. And, and he, you know, he was not afraid to share, you know, his secrets to becoming better because he wanted to see you become better. And that's, I think, one of the great things about leadership is, you know, not scared that someone else is going to outdo you, but to want to help others, you know, get to your level. And I think that's so important. You know, I uh, I have there's a marker in my journey where I started to see that. So I mentioned to you a, a story that later on, as a GM, uh, you know, I, I would have these conversations with the second shift supervisor. But between there, uh, there was a, a young fellow I hired, a young engineer. I kind of stole him from from another company, and uh, he's he's great young guy, and and um, he was having some trouble kind of with our processes, with, with our process. So I took them under my wing. This is what we're doing. This is how we're doing. I'm going to sit you with a couple of subject matter experts, get you, get you tied off. Did that. Um, and then I was walking around, you know, my site with one of my management, management team members and I saw, saw the young guy, right? And this time he has a, you know, button up shirt and nice slacks and, and loafers on, right? And he's, he's probably 25, 26, you know? And I said, hey, you know, how's, how's it going? He goes, fine, sir. I said, are you picking up where we're being asked? I'm picking it up. I'm, I'm learning. I've got it. And I said, you look pretty good today. And he says, well, I'm trying to be like my work dad. And so I think I'll be successful. And I said, thank you very much. And I walked away. And Stacy, I got about 10 steps away. And, and my, my management team member standing next to me says, he looks at me and he goes, you know, you know, he was talking about you, right? And I said, what do you mean? He says, work dad. <laughs> and it, it didn't it didn't hit me that was one of my pivotal moments right that yeah. i was an example for a young person getting things right or just setting it straight or seeing here's a model of what i wanted to be and it, and it didn't click that you yeah. know that that hey i'm i'm old enough to have this engineer you know kid and and i was but it just didn't yeah. it didn't model so so that was a pivotal moment for me that wow okay they are watching me right they they're seeing what's happening. So now I really got to get my act together and, yeah. and, and be what I want them to be. And I think that's so important is mentorship. You know, there are so many times I've seen leaders, you know, like they get an ego and they're, they become more of a boss than a leader. And yeah. they like yeah. to, they start telling people what to do and they start wanting things one, two, three. And, you know, they think this is leadership. This is not leadership. This yeah. is, you know, the total opposite of leadership. And it's actually a very bad example because people in society pick things up. And sometimes, especially when they're just coming out of school or they're new to an industry, they don't know what the right way of, of leadership yet is or the wrong way of leadership. And they learn from their mentors. And it's so important to have good mentorship. And it's so important to be an example. And, you know, and, and in your eyes, what is a good mentor? What is, you know, when people are trying to help others become good leaders, 
what are the qualities and the things that people should really emphasize on to be a good mentor and, you know, teach others how to be a good leader? That's a great question. So uh, I, I, I have stories for days, by the way. So <laughs> I get to this, <laughs> I'm saying to myself, right, I'm, I'm a little older and I said, you know, I need to, I, I need to, I need to, I, I want to grow faster, right? I, I don't, I don't want to take forever to do this journey. I need a mentor. And so I remember having this conversation with my, I need a mentor. And so I started looking around the, the, the aerospace industry within the company for, for those that might be able to mentor me, not necessarily within my building or my leadership structure. So mm -hmm. I, I share that because sometimes there can be this almost a conflict of interest, right? When I'm your leader and I'm your mentor, when you have a really good mentor, they don't, they may not have a, a, a physical stake in, in your, your level of growth or your review, your development right there. Right. Because I still have to, I still have to grade you, right? I still have to review you. I still have to watch your performance. And, and so it's hard to do both. So needless to say, what, what happens when a great mentor and I had two early on, one was this very gregarious program manager, right? Outgoing, just, I mean, he had a, he had a convertible car, right? Kind of thing. He he walked in, he was kind of boisterous and <laughs> opposite of me. Yeah, I, I could be loud, but not that loud. And But he was very smart. He had the personality. He had the customer interaction. Uh, you know, his, his customers liked him. And, and so he got business just because he knew what he was talking about, but he formed great relationships. And it was just it was just that. So we would go to lunch and, you know, he'd walk into his favorite place. You know, they know what his drink is, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. So I, I, I took those notes, but then I had another mentor at the same time, by the way, who he said to me, hey, listen, if you want the guy who's been with the company 35 years from the post office all the way up to the top, learned, drank the, the company Kool-Aid, <laughs> I'm, I'm not him. He goes, but I'll keep you on track. And I, I said, yeah, I think you can help me out. And this guy was highly ethical, not saying the other one wasn't, highly ethical. He would give me chapters of a book to read and say, you know, listen, when we meet again, let's go over this. You know, how's how's your family? What, what's going on there? You know, what, and th he, he had a completely different approach. He says, you know, what are your options in life? Are you, do you have this work-life balance? If you tell me on our next meeting that you worked 58 hours last week, he goes, I'll have a problem with you as a mentor. Yeah. He goes, and I probably shouldn't because, but I'll have a problem because it tells me you, you're not putting your priorities in order. So I had these two very diverse mentors, but yeah. yet they had the qualities of great mentors for, for whomever. So I think mentors, again, should have that responsibility to, to be a, not just a good leader, but typify that, be that example for that leader, have a great mm -hmm. relationship with those around them. If you yeah. have a mentor who no one else likes, or, or you have a mentor that everyone else ostracizes, that's an issue, right? So <laughs> it didn't have to be likable, but but they must be able to have that relationship and navigate themselves in the business because you yeah. need to learn that. You need to learn that earlier on. You know, right. you, you can't you don't have the time to learn that earlier. And then the last I say as a as a, a, a good quality of, of a mentor is to to be able to take the mission and the vision of the company and be able to dissect that, right? And and put it in bite-sized pieces for you, the mentee, and for others around them to be able to digest wholly. Because the higher you go in the company, the, the more you have that responsibility, but the harder it is for you to understand where the mission and vision is for you. And so you yeah. gotta be able to break that apart and help your people see so they can take this in bite-sized chunks. I think that's great advice. And, you know, one thing, you know, when it comes to being a mentor, when it comes to being a mentor and then becomes being a leader, when you become a leader, you know, I think, you know, some of the things that, you know, I think stay with people is self-doubt. People worry about, am I good enough? Am I, um, you know, am I better than the, the next person? You know, I was listening to an interview and it was one of, it was a comedian. He sold out five shows to Madison Square Garden and everywhere he went, he sold out a show. But when you talk to him on a one-on-one -on -one interview, 
he was like, he always felt unsure of himself. He always felt like he wasn't good enough. He always worried, you know, am I going to be able to succeed? And, and, you know, am I, am I really the right person? Am I really doing the good job? And, you know, and I'm sure, and, and this really applies to everybody. I mean, you know, and when it comes to being a leader and when it comes to being in a, in a corporation or a company or a business, and you have to be a leader, you know, how do you get past that self-doubt? Because I think it's just human for everybody to self-doubt themselves, but you can't let it affect you in a way where it's going to affect you from being a good leader. You have to kind of get past it. How do you get past it? And how do you start to really get past the self-doubt to the point where I believe in myself, I can do it. You know, I am worthy of myself. You know, the, um, uh, I, was, I was telling my wife the other day that, you know, I, I was engaging with some some people and some corporate people are different. And, and you can become either too comfortable where where you lose you lose the edge that you need to be important. And, and what what that means is, you know, as you get higher up, uh, uh, they look for that executive presence. And part of that executive presence presence is a measure of confidence that that you have to, I, I want to say you have to learn, but it's it's stair steps in learning. So yeah. you be get really you get really good at what you do, whatever that is, and then you yeah. get occasional pats on the back. Great job, and then you start to say, okay, great, I, I know what I'm doing, and then you get back to an area where you're not quite sure as you're learning those next steps, right. and then you repeat, you repeat, you repeat. Well, you become a leader after a while. You understand that the decisions you make, and I, I again, I teach this. The decisions you make not just have consequences, but when things don't go well, you, you're you able to see your decisions in what went well and what didn't. And right. as a strong leader, you, you got to be able to hold that together, right? And so it takes confidence to hold that together and not have the doubt that, oh man, I, I made this decision and this is here we are. Do that in the corner of your room at home, but as soon as you walk out that door, put on that air of confidence that you know, you're because they're looking for that. Not just yeah. your leaders are looking for that. The people that follow you want to know that not just that you're, you're, you're right. You don't have to be right. But they want to know that you're confident in what you're saying. Because yeah. if, you're, if you're confident in what you're saying, Stacey, you know what? I trust you. Mm -hmm. Hey, you, you, you're at a good level. Here you are. You're, you're a professional where you're doing. I sought out you. Uh, and I'll, I'll tell your guests, that I sought out you to have this conversation with you. So mm -hmm. whatever you're saying, I'm in coming out of your mouth, I'm confident. Now within you, you may have this little, this edge. I'm not sure. Did I, I don't mm -hmm. hear it because I'm hanging on your words because I'm confident and trust that what you're saying, that's what leadership is looking for. That's what you become. The more confident you are in what you're saying. Right. And then your people, you can teach, you can teach that confidence because again, they're, they're, they're looking for that. You, there's that edge, you know, I, I, I was a, a director in an aerospace company and I would walk into a, a meeting and there's other directors in these, you know, cross collaborative functional groups. And, and I have zero, I know a little about finance, but you know, I'm like, you know, my face wants to do this, like, ah. but, <laughs> but I'm, I'm stoic, right? I'm, I'm sitting just, this is confident, yeah. you know? <laughs> when I get my two minutes to say something, I sound exactly professional, exactly what I need to say. And then when I get done on the inside, I'm like, oh, yeah, <laughs> but, but you got it together. So, so you, right. you're right. I think that when you, when you grow into your position, get confident, understand that's what they're looking for. That's what you need to represent. You know, I, I, I don't, I'm on the edge with the, with the term, the imposter syndrome. It's been around for 10 years or so. Yeah. Um, I, I'm on the edge of, of it. I don't fall fully into it because I believe you have to have a transitory state between where you are and where you're trying to get to. Yes. Right? And oh, yeah. that transition is not being an imposter. That transition is learning, growing, watching, coaching, being coached. It's all of that. And, and so... Um, at the same time, you have people that's under you, that's watching you, learning from you. And so you're not being an, an imposter. You're doing your best until yes. you got that nailed down. And by the way, once you have that nailed down, once you have that position solid, good leaders should already be reaching for that next position if that's what you want. So, yes. so really, 
the plateau of what you got is short. The mm -hmm. transitory period between positions are typically long. Yes. So here's where I was. Here's where I'm trying to get to. And then here's where I am. Here's where I'm trying to get to. So we should always be in, in more of a transitory state than, yes. than a I got it state. Because by the time you got it, you might be holding other people back. I know that's a long answer, but. No, but I think that's a great answer because most most of the great entrepreneurs I hear, most of the great business people I hear, most of the great leaders that I hear speak, you know, when I would go to different conventions, they all talk about that. You have to set your goals high. You have to really, you can't just give a little yourself a little. It's great to have short-term goals and long-term goals, but you really have to set the bar high because you really, you want to be able to climb up that ladder and you want to challenge, you know, great leaderships love challenge. And you really in order to be a good leader you have to really put that bar up high and say you know what i'm going to get there and you're going to keep working on it and do what you have to do whether it's going to conventions learning reading you know practicing you know whatever it takes you know you should always i i always feel that you should have that bar set up really high and say i'm going to be there by the end of the year i plan to do x y and z and you know yes. you know and you just keep you you just you, you pump your energy towards that whatever that x y and z is and believe it or not, most people who are determined and who are, who are resilient and who are, are very structured and they, they keep their eye on that high bar, get to that high bar. What is your feeling? I, you know, I was just, it, it's, it's remarkable. We talked about this. It's remarkable who's watching you yeah. and they don't see you as you see. You. So, so we're going to talk about this transitory state. So I started my leadership consulting business and that was rocky. You know, I'm, I'm you know, I'm <laughs> so <laughs> brief background. I'm, I'm a G man, right? I did 10 years in the United States Marine Corps, right? So I'm, I'm disciplined that way. Another years in, in, in a business operational leader, 15 years in aerospace. And now here I am trying to start something on my own talking about crazy, right? I'm, and, <laughs> and so it's remarkable how as, ambivalent as I am, or I feel at these moments. And then all it takes is a few days ago, I was giving a, a, a free class and I'm, I'm talking and, and one of the attendees on there was, was a guy that I hired like six years ago, right? As a leader and a manager. And I we're, we're talking afterwards and he says, you know, Hey, you know, we, some of us in the past were saying, if there's any, if there's any one person that was going to do that or any one person that was going to write a book, we always knew it was going to be you. And it's remarkable, Stacey, as, as much as we doubt ourselves, right? Yeah. As much as we feel we have these shortcomings or that goal we're trying to reach is so far away or how much work it really takes or how much sacrifice or, you know, sometimes you want to shift the goal, you know, but it's mm -hmm. remarkable once, once you hit it and you know how much work went, in, went into it. And all it takes is one person to go, you know, we, some of us said, if there's any one person who's going to do that, it's you. You didn't know it. You you, you were just full of doubt, right? Yeah. And, and, and you now you have this whole team of people going, we're watching you again. Yeah. You, you don't work for us. You're not our leader. You're not our boss. But we're watching you again. Because and, and sure enough, a couple of people reached out and said, hey, in about two or three years, I think I think I may want to do this. A couple of senior leaders said, hey, yeah. you know, I'm going to be retiring. I'm 62. I'm going to be retiring in four years. Right. I like to know how what what trouble I'm going to get in. And I said, give me a call. We'll talk about it. Yeah. I I didn't I didn't know that. Right. So it's it's one of those, if I could say this for 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 people that's pressing, keep pressing, keep setting those goals, keep reaching those little milestones. Don't worry about the people around you and just cross your fingers somewhere along the way. Someone's going to give you that, that affirmation that's going yeah. to make it all worth it. And I feel also too, like, don't you feel like the qualities you learn, everything that you've learned working towards leadership, you can actually take those qualities and apply them to any area of your life. And you can excel in all areas, personal, you know, you know, outside friendships, relationships, you know, what do you, what do you, what is your take on that? You know, <laughs> I, I'm laughing because there's a, there's a funny story I tell, um, you know, as, as an operations leader at, at the aerospace company, I, I remember getting my first uh, evaluation, right? And I worked hard to get there and and, and uh, I, I, I kind of knew, I felt I knew what it was going to be. And it, and it wasn't, 
it wasn't <laughs> as positive as I as I hoped it would be. It, it yeah. was food for thought, and and it made me dig into who I am. And and I swear they couldn't get me right. Uh, <laughs> It took a little bit of time to realize it it was me. I wasn't terrible, but you know, I wasn't really what what I thought. And, and after, you know, thousand hours of of all my book readings and getting into it and taking every course and just developing something new, which I I, I did. Um, I, I remember going going home to my wife and saying, you know, this is the evaluation it gave me. And you know, I can't believe. And she she looks through it and she says, you know, most of this is completely true about you. <laughs> so I think I think that's 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 a part of it, right? It's it's a part of knowing knowing who you are and and yeah. not shying away from the true feedback that that we need. Um, many times in, in in corporate industry, you know, there are people that are ready to be leaders or leaders, and they're waiting for corporate to determine what their level of of growth looks like, right? You, you're waiting for corporate to say, here's a 360 feedback. You're waiting for corporate to say, take this disc assessment or this assessment. You're waiting for corporate. And in reality, some of the best leaders, you know, a little bit, some of the best leaders said, I'm I'm going to go around that, right? I, I, I want to know what it's like to lead today. Yeah. Now, I, mm -hmm. I don't wait in line. I'm not waiting to see who's going to move here, who's going to move there. I'm going to get my act together now. And I right. think that is what's important for people to see whether, again, whether you are a system manager at a fast food joint, whether you're a, a low level manager in an aerospace industry or automotive, or just, you know, by yourself as a coach or consultant, you, you have to take the bull by the horns and say, what don't I know? Right. And networking with other powerful leaders, such as yourself, networking, getting out there, having these relationships, even if it's a one day conversation, right. you're going to take these notes, you're going to, and you say, this is what I can apply because th there's more for me to do. Right. Oh, a hundred percent, a hundred percent. And, and constructive criticism, I think really people have to be open to it. You know, I've seen people who, who show great leadership qualities, but constructive criticism is not one of their qualities. And when you try to give them good constructive criticism, they they take it as an insult rather than they take it as a positive thing. You might see something, say, wow, they're a great person, but they really should tweak this area up and they would be even better. You know, have you seen that, you know, it, working around so many leaders? You know, I, I'll, I'll give you, there is, you know, I, I believe in transitions. I'm, I, later, I'm going to, a couple of years, I'm going to write a book about transitioning because you remember I talked about being on one state in the transitory phase. I, I love I, I love the the aspect of transitions in, in our lives, right? Not just in physical growth, in, in right, as psychologically, mentally, relationship-wise, and when we talk about our careers. And I share that because I've spent some time, as, as someone who'd been in the military, I said 10 years in the Marines, I, oh. I spent time kind of working with military personnel who retire or yeah. spent a significant amount of time in the military, and then they come into the civilian world as, as a leader because they, they, you know, and they they can't get it. There, there's a disconnect. Mm -hmm. And the disconnect is, and I've spent time saying to them, is listen, when you did your 15 to 17 to 20 years in the, in the military, yes. you, you were not open to feedback because feedback was not an open concept in the military, right? You, you have sergeant or staff sergeant or whatever on your rank. I have private or corporal. You're never going to get feedback from me. <laughs> and, and in the civilian world, you need that, right? You you need to know whether you're on course, not just for yourself, but yes. for what leadership is going to tell you. Because for for by the way, the higher you go, as you know, the higher you go in leadership and, and in industry, the the less they tell you often. Yes. Right. So so, um, so you're you're, you're <laughs> yeah. a director. Yeah. You might you might hear maybe twice in a year that you're not doing well, and and right. and. and Twice is, is too few a number of times to get it right, right? So, right. I, so I, you're right. I hear that and I see that a lot and, and it works. It's more prevalent, I think, in, in military to civilian transition because, you know, uh, up and down, by the way, um, right. there are, there are uh, I've seen a guy who was a retired captain and uh, a, a person who was, a, you know, a staff sergeant and they're in the civilian world. And 
you know, the staff sergeant, former staff sergeant was my, my boss. And I would go to him and say, Hey, listen, this is what we need. We need this, you know, can you go and talk? And he, he was completely right. He was incapable of going to his leader because he saw them in this military fashion. Mm -hmm. He saw them in this structured fashion that only exists in the, in the military, yes. but we're in the civilian world. And so he was incapable of being the type of leader that most of his people needed. And, and he, he didn't know that. So uh, I quickly kind of surpassed him. And then I would, I would coach him because I became his boss later. I would coach him on, listen, you, you know, that's, that's something you cannot do. You know, you got to be able to navigate right. yourself in the civilian world. And, and then the other is when you put leaders too much on a pinnacle. Right. So, uh, you know, you really need to be honest with them and they can be honest with you. Not not so honest that it gets you fired. But um, <laughs> you, I've seen that, by the way, I, 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 I've seen someone write an email to the CEO of a 20 billion dollar company and said, hey, I didn't get a dollar raise, but yet <laughs> you were able to cash in on two point four million. <laughs> yes, I saw that personally. And the next uh, week he wasn't there. So I, I did. <laughs> That's going beyond it. But ultimately, what we're talking about here is if you're not able to take the feedback or if you're not able to, then that is, you could become so one-sided in your, your level of leadership that you're no good, not just for the people you lead, you're not yeah. good for leadership above you because they can't tell you anything. And you're not good for yourself because you have these plans set that you will never meet because you're not willing to hear the feedback of what it takes to get there. Right. Right. It's so important. And, and, and you know what, when it comes to military transition, they have the most difficult time transitioning into civilian life. And many of them uh, have, it's, it's very hard. Some of them stay in the military because they, they have a very difficult time when they get out of the military. They just don't know what to do with themselves because the transition, it's like two different worlds. It's just completely different. And, and that's, and, and, you know, I, I, I'm not trying to turn it there and I'm trying to trying to soften it a little bit. Uh, because that that can get really touchy, but I I think, you know, uh, a a lot, a lot could be done, at, not from the government's point of view, and this is not that kind of conversation, but from civilian leaders taking yes. them under the wing and say, hey, let me show you how it works here, right, right, well, let, like let me let me show you how it works here, because because you, you got sixty percent of what I want as a leader, yes. and the other. 40% I want to teach you, but you also have 25% of what I don't need. I mean, mm -hmm. I don't need it at all, right? I, I don't need you to put your hand up when you're talking to people. I don't need you to say, this is my business. You know, I, I need, so I, there's a lot, there's a lot to teach them. And I think they're, they're, they're ready for it. And yeah. I, I'm, I'm going to work towards that. I know a couple of colleagues that want to work towards that to, to help smooth that transition as a leader. So that's, that's you know, as a leadership consultant, I want to focus there that, you know, you get out 15, 20 years, you've led lots of people, you've led in missions, you've had $200 million worth of, you know, property and, and, and resources and management. And, and let's find a way to transition that into this world where people can really use what you have to offer. So I think that's very important. Oh, a hundred percent. I think that's a great idea too, is to put, you know, a certain amount of people underneath your wing because you have the military experience, you know what leadership is and they just need a few tweaks here and there. And it's amazing what a few tweaks will do, you know, and how easily they could glide into the civilian world and take all those great qualities that they learned in the military life and put it to good usage where if they don't have that right coaching, you know, they could be lost and, and never accomplish those goals. Just like leadership, we need mentors, we need people to guide us to be able to get to that level of leadership. So we can, we can be mentors to the younger generation and they, you know, and have that endless cycle of leadership and 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 be able to really mold this world into a in a into a uh, a universe of people that could actually change the world for the better. Now, I would love to hear about your new book. Tell me about your book because I'm really excited about it. Yes, th thank you for that. Um, so my my book is called it's here it's uh it's called Highway to Skyway Leadership, and it's it's charting a course for excellence in automotive and aerospace leaders. So, so for me, coming out of that industry, you know, I've, I've noticed a, along the way through my journey that, uh, and I put kind of this uh, eight-step methodology, and, and 
uh, that here's what you need to sustain yourself as a leader, right? So uh, there are many leaders that they're junior leaders and then they become a, you know, kind of a, a mid-level meet a leader, but they don't know what, what to do there, right? It was either longevity or it was a fluke. Someone passed away or people retired and they became something, but they don't know how they got there. So for me, I wanted to write something on how to chart a course for what excellence looks like. Right. What excellence look like, again, I talked about getting away from the cliches. You hear this yes. all the time. I would have, I, I had a leader and I tell the story in my book. I had a leader that worked for me. Great guy, hired him outside of the aerospace industry and brought him in. And sometimes we don't know enough, right? That's, that's normal. You get into a new business. But he would throw every cliche at me. You know, he would say, uh, you know, Eric, I'm taking a holistic approach to this. And I would go, fine. So what are you doing? He goes, well, I'm, I'm looking at it from all sides and I'm going to, uh, I go, I got it. But what, what are you, what are you going to do? And he would go, you know, when we, when we look at it, it's, um, it's, it's a process that I guess stop. Okay. Let's stop. <laughs> Give <me> four actions. <laughs> Some leaders can fall into what it takes to look like a leader, sound like a leader, but they're, but yeah. they're not leaders. Right. Because they're they're really ineffective. They're 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 and I don't want to go again to the imposter syndrome, but they're just ineffective leaders at that point. So my book talks about staying away from the cliches. Yes. My book talks about modeling. I talk about model what matters, right? So as a leader, you have a responsibility, I think, to model what you expect your people to be. If you are a high class, high ethical company, the leaders should typify that period, hands down. Hands right. down. I, I remember a time that um, I was walking out of the building. It's 5.30 or so. One of my customer service analysts were on the phone or, or um, uh, representatives on the phone. And she paused and she says, Eric, I, I got an irate customer, but so-and-so is not you know, picking up their line. And I said, give me, give me the phone. I don't care how high are you on, uh, how high are you? Hey, how are you? Yes. Eric, okay, what? Uh-huh. Yes. I understand. Sorry to hear that. Yep, that's you're right. That is too long. How about this? How about this? I'm going to talk to them. They're not going to be into 8 a.m., but here's what I'm going to do. Right. I'm going to assign this person this, this person this. Here is my personal cell phone number. I'm going to call you back in three hours to give you an update. And then I'm going to call you back at 11 p.m. and give you an update. And then call me at eight and we'll do this. And he says, okay. By the way, this guy, he called me at six. He called me at 11 p.m. He called me at 8 a.m. And no matter where you are as a leader, are you still beholden to being the type of leader that you expect, right? So I want them to be able to do that, meaning those that work in that particular department, those that see me as their leader. So I'm mm -hmm. going to do it. And I'm not going to shy away. You're not going to be so high as a leader that you're in, ineffective. So again, charting charting a course to, uh, to excellence as a leader, I think is so, so important. And again, I'm, I'm proud of it. It allowed me to to kind of take the last 15 years of guidance uh, that I've given through multiple sites. Uh, I was an operation leader in Atlanta. I was a GM in Wichita, Kansas. I was a business excellence director in Ohio and in here in Florida as a associate director of manufacturing. So those levels of responsibility um, increased, which I wanted, but also the culture changes, Stacey. Yeah. What I learned in Georgia didn't necessarily apply all the time in Wichita, Kansas, right? It's right. just yeah. different cultures. You kind of have to approach it a little differently and then going yeah. to Ohio. So that's that's a part of in this book as well. Like as a leader, you need to set a certain, you know, uh, 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 a set of, again, methodologies, a set of, of, of uh, ideals to say, this is how I'm going to sustain as yes. a leader. I, I can't go down. I'm going to go up. But mm -hmm. if I follow this pattern, I at least going to maintain my excellence. Right. A hundred percent. Now tell me what your definition is an excellent leader. So I look at an excellent leader and, and this is going to sound, I'm trying not to sound self-serving, right? <laughs> <laughs> you know, confident, right? Confident. <laughs> um, I think an excellent leader is one that... It, it, that those that you have led or those that have worked, not just for you, but with you, wish they had a lot of the traits that you are exhibiting daily. 
not right. not weekly or month, but daily. And right. that makes that makes an excellent leader because that's one of those things that years down the road, people will remember things about you that you don't even remember, right? They, you know, Eric, I remember this happened, this happened, and you said this. And, and I'm like, really? You know, I'm I'm doing this, Stacey. Really? <laughs> really? That's what I said. You know, I'm I'm listening to these stories about me. You know, yeah. when when I was to me at my peak, but again, great leaders, you, you're always moving higher. So I yeah. was at my peak for that moment. But I'm right. hearing these stories, I'm hearing these tales, I'm hearing these impacts on people's lives that they weren't inconsequential to me, right? They, they were very important, but I was on my own journey. So I was right. just helping them on theirs. And it's remarkable years, again, years later, I'm here it is. I, I told you a story of a guy that I hired eight years ago. Here I am having a conversation with him last Sunday on yeah. what he needs to do. I said, here are three major points that this yeah. would help you. I didn't charge him, you know, I, I'm gonna charge him later, but I didn't charge him, but <laughs> I, I, I want him to be better. I want him to feel good about where he is and where he's going. Here's another mm -hmm. guy that was a manager I hired. He's on his own journey. He's looking at what five years looks like as a consultant. So now what I'm doing, he's watching me. So my mm -hmm. my daughter, she's a young entrepreneur. You know, she's she's kind of getting it for free. Yeah. But as a great leader, are you consistent with what you're saying at home? Mm -hmm. Right? Among your spouse, among your your family members, among your neighbors, yes. as you are at work. So I think that's what makes a, a great leader. Uh mm -hmm. and and sometimes I'm I'm surprised at some of the great leaders that I meet that are nothing like me. Yeah, that that's that's powerful. That's mind blowing, right? That there are great leaders that are ultra collaborative. Mm -hmm. I am not. Yeah, <laughs> I, yeah. I got one or two really good people. I bounce some ideas off of. You know, they're they're experts in their craft, and sure yeah. enough, I formulate a plan that you know 95 percent works. But these right. people are ultra collaborative, and I go like, man, there's no way that should work, and it works perfectly. Because they get, they got the feel of all these other people and 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 they're really giving and they, so I love the fact that there could be multiple types of leaders, not even like me. So those, you know, right now your 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 clients, your guests that are watching this, saying, "Hey, this guy is a bit." You don't have to be like me at all, and you can be a perfect leader for a group of people who see everything out of you and they want to be that. So I think that's what makes an excellent leader. Oh, I agree 100%. I've met, met so many great leaders and their personalities are so all over the board. They have so many different types of personalities, so many different types of, of ways of thinking, ways of dressing, ways of acting. You know, it, it's completely, it's just all over the board, but all their methods and all their ways of doing things and the way they present themselves, it all works. But yeah. they're 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 doing it in a different way. But also they're you know they they might be focusing on different aspects of leadership too. You know, and some people are focusing on the whole, and then you have some people who are focusing on specific types of areas that, of leadership that really are powerful that each leader should have. So you know that's why it's so great too. Is sometimes just to learn from all the greats and and really take a little pieces from all of them because okay. really if you, you know there might be some things of one person that that are amazing you could implement them into yourself and, and your personality and and the way you do things and then you might see another leader and they're doing things completely different but they have some things that really would probably help you grow as a leader too so it's really you know really being open-minded and really taking in all the information and say what applies to me what makes you know what could i use from them that are going to make me better than who i am today I had I, two two quick stories. I had a uh, um, a person come in. She she didn't work under me. Uh, she was on a kind of an ancillary uh, department, but um, I was operations leader of a bunch of people, and she had to work with them. So she knocked on my my door, came in. She says, "Hey, can you give me some advice on on how to how to work best in in this environment?" And so I said, "Yes." And so I I talked for about ten minutes. You know, gave her some. I mean, this is my best stuff, right? And yeah. uh, <laughs> when when it was over. She says, are you mad at me? <laughs> and I said, I, I was completely gone, Stacey. I, I was like, what? She goes, she goes, I'm I'm sorry, I don't, I don't do indirect conversation well. 
So, and, and I was like, <laughs> thank you. And I really, I was like, thank you for sharing, sharing that. And, and I said, give, give me one second. And I took about two, like 20 seconds. And I went over my 10 minute spiel, cut it down to about four. And they were mainly actionable. This, this, don't do this. Don't do this, 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 stay away from this and this. And she goes, yeah. right now, she goes, thank you. And she was like, thank you. And then when she left, I was, I was dumbfounded for like 20 minutes. Yeah. And I'm very glad I had the interaction though, because, you know, I'm a certain d direct, you know, when I'm talking, I can be very direct, but typically I like to give, you know, examples. I like to share some stories. I, you know, again, I came out of the military and, and, and the military yeah. is very direct. It doesn't translate well in, in the military. So I, I tell yeah. these things of, you know, I, I used to say some, to someone, hey, could you do me a favor? Could you blah, blah, blah. And the guy would look at me and say, it's not really a favor, is it? You're you're probably telling me to do it. I, said, I can make you do it, right? I can I can make you do it. I just thought it sounds better if I say. <laughs> so, yeah. so learning that there are different styles for different people then helped me understand that when I did have one of our managers that worked for me, and yeah. and uh, he was great, but style completely different from mine. Yeah. And so I reached out to leadership and I said, "Listen, I need." I need an introvert leader to be a mentor for someone that works for me. Yeah. I said, I'm not an introvert. I'm rather extrovert. And, yeah. and those that follow my style will achieve success my way because of how I do it, right? Coming from this, I go, but they, they won't, they're, they're uncomfortable and they should be uncomfortable. It's not their style. And I reached out to leadership and I said, find me. And I found this uh, VP of finance. And uh, she was excellent. I, I knew her indirectly. Called her yeah. up. We had a great conversation. And I said, I have a have a guy who works for me. He's, he's a rather introvert. Very smart. I think he's a capable leader. I think he's going to be great. I think he's going to do well. But sometimes in the, in, in the environment that I kind of put out there, it, it, it doesn't. And she says, no, sure. And and for three or four times a, a year, she would mentor this, this person to success. And it was it was great. So again, I think great leaders also, some of your best people are not going to be like you. Right. But yeah. you as a leader have to say, what am I doing for my team? And that means and could mean find someone that is not like you so they can be successful. Right. A hundred percent. And that is a good leader when, you know, you realize that you can't be all you can't do it all, you know, and they are a lot of different personalities out there. So, you know, you have your A type, your B type, you know, you can go down the line and and, you know, so. Either you, if you, if you know how to reverse your language and your, and, and change their, your style, but if you're incapable of doing that and you, and you're, you're just comfortable with one style of teaching, you know, then you have to maybe send them out to somebody who has that style that who uses that style, you know, right. and because sometimes you're so used to teach in a certain way and, and that's what, you know, you know, it's very hard sometimes to, to redo it in a style that, you know, is, is, you, know, you might be a little familiar, familiar with it, but that means you have to re reverse everything that, you know, right. that you do, which could be overwhelming also. You know, I, 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 I should stress my team. And I say this again, in my consulting business, I'm, I'm a strengths based coach. So yeah. you know, as, as we identify, and we don't, have, we can use DISC and we can use the other methods, and we can find out your ENTJ or something. I got you, but I, I want to know what your strengths are. And as a strengths-based leader, I, I, I say it this way, and and I have it in my book as well. That you know, you you may be able to get twenty percent further along with a five percent increase in your one of your strengths, right? Then you would if you spend forty percent of your time trying to revert some of your weaknesses. So yeah. I, had a, I had a team member, she's great. Uh, and she would come by and she goes, Hey, Eric, can, you know, can we sit and talk? Sure. We have our little one-on-ones and she would have her pad and she would goes, okay. Um, if you can give me three things about me that I need to improve. And I would go, ah, fine. I, I'd say like one thing. And I go, but these other things, your customers love you. Your team can follow you. They will, they will follow you to the end of the earth. I probably continue doing this and she would go, okay. And then, so what's the second thing I need to work on? That's my weakness. And I would go, listen, so by the second time I had that conversation with her, Stacey, I said, listen, I'm not, I'm not the leader that's going to point out your weaknesses all the time. That's not right. a strengths-based leader. If you give me five more percent of your strength, yeah. you can take over this place. I right. said, some people are naturally poor spellers. I've met, <laughs> I've met, I've met CFOs 
that mm -hmm. can't spell a simple word. You know, they have a dictionary, just a simple yeah. word, but they're CFOs, you know, that kind of thing. I said, some things that you can't do well, maybe genetic, right? Mm -hmm. it, it, it's it's going to be a, a whole thing for you to try to correct some of your yeah. poor, horror skill sets yeah. or traits. So, right. so flip it around. Don't let it get in your way, but work really hard in your strengths so that that's what you shine. That's what you see. And that's what I need. I need a strong leader. I don't need one that's doubting themselves all the time, worrying about these things might get in their way. And it, it took a while, but I, I hope she's still not doing it today. <laughs> I, I hope. She, she, she's excelled. She went to another company. She's doing great. Uh, awesome. I wrote her a great review. Like, and so uh, she, 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 she's one of my pride and joys, but you know, I think it's great. Oh, that's awesome. Now, if you had to take everything we talked about today and you wanted to summarize some important aspects of the conversation, what are some of the things you'd like to emphasize to the listeners today that you feel are important? Perfect. You know, I, I would say if I can, if I can leave away with one or two main points of our conversation, I would say leadership is a, is a challenge that anyone that's willing to be a really good leader can reach mm -hmm. and not just reach, but they can excel because right. they take on the properties of being a great ethical leader, great example for people around them say to themselves, if, if, if I want a leader in front of me, what do I want them to do? That's what you will be. And yeah. then say to themselves, man, we need more of these. Mm -hmm. How can I turn around and mentor and bring up the next pipeline? So I'm, I'm a big pipeline guy. Who, who can yeah. I put in a pipeline? Mm -hmm. When I move from this seat, who's going to sit here? Right. How can I help them sit here? What right. do they need to sit here? And I think right. that's what that that's what sum up. I think a a good good takeaway is that you know good leaders going to look for that. They're going to be that. And and uh, when you go to finding methods from people, you know, let that be your end goal. Will this help me get to that point? And if so, fall in, all in. I love it. I love it. Now tell me some of the services that you provide. So I, as a for me as a leadership consultant. Uh, currently it's, it's mainly one-on-ones getting people where they're, where they're trying to get to. So I have a couple of type of clients that are falling to, right. And you probably have the ones that are a little disgruntled or where they are, they're not moving fast enough. So part of my first part is try saying, listen, your growth is in your hands. Yeah. I've met senior leaders that never started, uh, where they are is not the same company they started at 10 years ago. Yes. So if you're not willing to work to get as hard and better at being a leader now, don't worry about this company. Worry about yeah. being so I have those those clients that I talk to more often. And then I have the ones that say, hey, listen, how can I reach that next level? You know, mm -hmm. uh, ones that know me knew that in three years, I went from this to that. In another year and a half, I went to operations leader. In another three, I went to a general manager. In another two, I went to a director. In another one and a half, I was over a thousand people. So yeah. those that know me saw this quick trajectory and they're the ones that are saying, how can I get there? And so those are the ones I coach and mentor as well. Um, besides writing leadership books, I hope to have another one come out. I should have one come out that I'm co-authoring in February. And then uh, I think I'm having my transition one that I'm working on by next year this time. So it's it's uh, th that's the second. And then last, I think is is you know partnering with really good leaders and consultants to just build not even pay build a consortium of of, of a think tank. And I think that's a that's an end goal is build this think tank that that then those saying hey, how can I be like that? Or how can I teach that? You know, mm -hmm. that's, that's, I, you know, I have a, I think we, it's in my deal, a magnet leader course that I'm, I'm in about 60% developing. And that's the consortium has looked at some of what I put together and said, hey, Eric, let's work on what that magnet leadership course looks like next year. So those are the services I'm, I have and what I'm working on. I love it. I love it. And where can people find your book? So uh, on uh, uh, Amazon, obviously is, is where it's at. For the hard copy, and as a matter of fact, and, and this may come out, but uh, there's a launch today, and I think I'm going to keep it going for a little bit, but right now, um, I have my Kindle version is 99 cents, 
And again, mm -hmm. this this may not come out for for a little bit, but um, I'm I'm gonna I want to get it out there because I I need it in the hands of people to really become an excellent leader. I think I think it can help those that say to themselves, and, and nothing against corporations, but saying my company isn't moving fast enough to help me be the leader I'm trying to be. Right. Here we go. Right. <laughs> this will help you get there, whether you're in that company or the next company or the next company, you're going to be needed. I love it. I love it. Well, I'm, I'm telling you, this has been amazing, Eric. I thank you so much for being on the show. Now, before we go, tell everybody your website, because I want everyone to check out your website. You have an amazing website. Where can people find your website? Yeah, so it's www.smemediagroupllc.co. So that's where you can go there. And uh, there's a, a portion there. You can message me from there. Uh, I have my book links there. Uh, services are offered there. Obviously, for those business leaders there, hit me up on LinkedIn, uh, Eric Ebron. And, and by the way, there is an Eric E. Ebron that is a football player. Obviously, <laughs> I'm not him. Uh, I'm related to the guy, though. But, you know, this is this is where you find me. LinkedIn, <laughs> Eric E. Ebron Consulting. I love it. I love it. You know, Eric, this has been amazing. I've been so inspired by you. Your motivation, your compassion, and your love for what you do just shines right through. And your experience just goes through the roof. You have so much experience to share with others and to help others grow just like you did. And, you know, this has been an amazing experience for myself. And I really enjoyed this conversation. I hope you'll be back to the show. And I really enjoyed having you on the show. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you very much, Stacey. I, really, this is the pleasure is mine. Like I said, I've I've been trying to talk to you. So so thank you for the opportunity for your guests and your your customers, uh, everyone that's that's watching. You know, continue. She knows what she's doing. Uh, thank you so much. And everybody, if you like this show, you know, don't forget to follow and, you know, be a regular and, and listen to all our different podcasts. We have people as wonderful as Eric come on the show and they share their knowledge, their expertise, and they help people grow mentally, physically, spiritually, and business-wise. So visit us at The Advisor and Eric, again, it's been a pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Stacey. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.